People have been trying to poison each other for millennia. The need for new ways to deal with chemical, biological and radiological threats is as real today as it's ever been. We've come to DSTL, the Defence Science and Technology Labs, to take a look behind their normally sealed doors. I step inside the suits scientists use to work on the most deadly substances known to man and discover brand new research which could save personnel from an infectious disease that's plagued the military for decades. The containment labs at DSTL are laid out in a circle, a kind of onion of safety, if you will, with level 2 labs on the outside for less serious pathogens and level 3 and 4 labs in the centre where they work on the really nasty stuff. And this is our high containment facility, so this is where we handle our most hazardous pathogens. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see, lots of doors, and that's because we're controlling the airflow now. Um, and essentially we're pumping air out through filtration systems to make sure nothing from inside this laboratory can, can get outside, because obviously we're handling hazardous pathogens. And those pathogens are things like plague, um, they're viruses like Ebola, so they, they are in the environment if you catch the disease, quite, quite lethal, um, which is why we're, we're very, very careful about how we handle them. Over um, the years, DSTL has responded to national and international emergencies, from testing white powder in letters after anthrax attacks, to screening people for Ebola, the Novichok poisonings, and of course, their work on COVID. Everything they do aims to keep military and civilians safe, preventing and deterring adversaries from using chemical, biological and radiological weapons and giving our forces advantage over the enemy. Can you come, Hannah? Um, so as we said, this is where we handle our, our most hazardous pathogens and we've um, used some chemicals to sterilise the inside of this facility to make it safe for you to come in. And what we're going to do is show you and give you an, a little bit of an insight into how our scientists handle those uh, materials. So the first thing we're going to need is some PPE, so grab a lab coat. Okay. Um, and you need to put that on and button it up for me. And this is yellow, is that important? Um, yellow for us in this facility is level three. Um, so things at level three are pathogens like plague um, and anthrax. It would be red if we were in level four. And level four uh, is things like Ebola um, and Marburg virus. So this is the half suit isolator you're going to use. And this is designed really to do two things, to, to keep you safe, um, and also, but also obviously to keep members of the public safe because it contains the hazardous material that we're using inside it. And what we're going to do, if you go that way, what we're going to do is pop you into it and we're going to have you experience some of how we would handle something like plague in here. Okay. The scientists who work in these high containment labs are specialists and must have at least two years experience working with less hazardous pathogens. Tim's letting me have a go to show how difficult their work really is. Body up inside that suit. So I've been here over 20 years. When I started, the use of chemical weapons, for example, was something which was consigned to history and I had to make quite a lot of historical arguments in order to um, articulate to people why it was important uh, to defend against chemical weapons. Unfortunately, that is not the case anymore. We have seen use of chemical weapons um, in our lifetimes uh, and allegedly, you know, quite close to home. The first thing we need to do is get the equipment that we're going to use inside the isolator. So what you need to do is open this door and there are a number of locks on the door, that's right. So open all of those, that's it. And open the door, other way, no, that's it. Okay, so we need our pathogen on the white cloth. That's it. Okay, and what we're going to practice is a simple dilution. So pick up the pipette, which is the gun-shaped thing, and put the tip into it. MOD finds itself, I think, in a position currently where science and technology is going to be really, really important uh, for it in the future, both in the near-term future and in its longer-term future. And that's to achieve something called operational advantage. Because what we're trying to do, of course, is give the military the advantage over our adversaries so that they can, so they can win. And increasingly, we think that science and technology is going to play a major part in delivering that operational, operational advantage. So pick the middle pot and take the top off. Now you need to use one hand to get the top off without getting the liquid on your hand. 
That's it. And then put the pot back down in the rack. No. Mm, yeah, OK. This is really hard. Watch where you're dripping the material. Remember, that's plague, if it was for real. Like that? Yep. OK, excellent. Why don't you come out and we'll have a chat about how you got on. So it's difficult, isn't I'm it? I'm sure there's a really elegant way to do that, if you're used to it. OK, how is that? It's hard. A, a good first go, OK, but you have to imagine that's plague. And the aim here is, is not to contaminate the inside of the containment system or to get it on your hands. Okay? Yeah. So I stress, it was a good first go, but at points you had your fingers over the top. Mm -hmm. You found it difficult to get the tops off. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of drips came out of the pipette as you were as you were waving it round in the air. Okay, so we're um, not convinced I wouldn't have caused um, so a, I <laughs> a new plague. I think you'd have got it on, you'd have contaminated your hands and the inside of the containment cabinet. The work done by DSTL is diverse and much of it top secret. But it's not all about lethal substances that might be used against us. If we're talking about protecting our military, there's one big killer that no one really thinks about. Overall, Infectious diseases are one of the major issues for all armed forces when they find themselves in conflict. They kill more people than, than guns and, and bullets and, and bombs do. We live in a world where the climate is changing um, and we know that that's having an impact on infectious diseases. So about half of all infectious diseases are likely to be made worse by climate change. Why is global warming having that impact? Well, that, that's quite a complex answer, but to keep it simple, it depends on the pathogen. But one of the reasons for that is that as global warming happens, it allows vectors, so in particular mosquitoes, to survive in areas that they didn't survive before. And then they're responsible for transmitting disease to humans. And, that, and that's the case, I think, for malaria and also for dengue. For decades, scientists have been looking for a cure for a disease called Q fever. It's caught by breathing dust from the faeces of infected animals and occurs all over the world, particularly in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. In most cases, symptoms are mild, but some are left in a debilitating condition and have to be medically discharged from the military. DSTL have been working closely with Defence Medical Services to try and find a solution, and Kat, one of their youngest scientists, has been working on it. OK, so tell me what we're looking at here. What is this? So Q fever is a disease and it's caused by a bacteria called Coxiella bonetii. Um, so here, this is a microscope image. And if we look closely, you can see highlighted in red, these are the bacteria within cells. The work so far has found a new version of antibiotics to use on Q fever and it's already helping treat service personnel who contract the disease. But research is continuing. Recently, Kat's been using this bit of kit. It's a kind of drug robot. Scientists fire existing drugs at it, and it analyzes each one's effectiveness against the bacterial cells that cause Q fever. It does it far quicker than a human, and it's shown some intriguing results. We've been using this robot to test thousands of drugs, and one of the most interesting things that we found is that anti-inflammatory drugs, so things like ibuprofen and aspirin, seem to have a killing effect on the bacteria, which is unusual because these are drugs that we use for headaches, for fevers, and they work on the host. And there's potential for this to be used in the future um, as a possible uh, therapy combined with antibiotics. That's really exciting. Yeah. Whether it's finding something as simple as ibuprofen might work on Q fever or investigating deadly chemicals and pathogens that could be used against us, the work in these labs is crucial, even if much of it cannot be discussed. I wish, in a way, that, that I could explain all of the great S&T that we do. Through my career, I've seen um, national emergencies where our staff have, have simply given everything that they possibly could do um, to support those national, those national responses, and I'm really proud of them, absolutely. Hannah King, BFBS Forces News, DSTL Port and Down, Salisbury. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.